do you find woodland photography easy? <laughs> because I don't. It's something that I actually really struggle with. It's the one part of landscape photography that I'd just say is my Achilles heel. I can go out to some beautiful woodlands, some forests, and I'm with my camera and nothing ever seems to jump out at me and where I'm thinking, yeah, that's a great composition. I feel like I'm always leaving quite disappointed. So I thought I'd make a video today on how to get the most out of your woodland photos inside of Photoshop. And there's a couple of techniques which I'm going to show you in today's video, which are really subtle, but they can actually make a big difference. Now this video is going to be probably about five to eight minutes long. It's going to be a couple of techniques which you should find pretty easy. And by the end of it, hopefully, it's something which you can then take away and use in your own photos and really benefit from it. So let's jump in and get started. So here we go. Right, this is the picture that we're going to be working with in today's tutorial. Now, I'm going to let you know that both these effects should be used quite subtly. They're not strong effects which you should be applying to your woodland photos because if you do apply them quite strongly, you're going to get a really unrealistic look. And I'm sure that most of you are not looking for that kind of effect. The first effect I'm going to apply is one which is actually being created by a guy called Nick Page. So I can't take any credit for this, but there is a step which I'm going to add into this which is actually really important. So just make sure that you've got your woodland photo added in, and then you're going to go ahead and create a duplicate layer. So Control J to do that with. The next thing is I'm going to add a Gaussian blur to this photo. Let's just zoom out a bit. And to do that, you go up to Filter, and then you go down to Blur and Gaussian Blur. Now on the tutorial which Nick does, he goes ahead and just clicks Gaussian Blur and adds it to the layer. But there is a problem doing that. I'll just quickly show you. So if I click Gaussian Blur, and let's say I want a radius of around about 8, click OK, and there we go. But what happens, let's say, if I now decide that it's, it's a bit strong, it's a bit too intense, or it's not strong enough. I don't really have an option to just get rid of it. I mean, I can take a step back and then go through the process again, but I don't really want to do that. So a way to actually get rid of doing that, and a less destructive way of doing this, is to right click on the layer, and then go to Convert Smart Object. This is brilliant actually. And if you don't know about this, this is really going to be beneficial for you whenever you're editing. Because what I can do now is I can actually choose a filter, any filter pretty much, and apply it to the layer. So if I go ahead and click on Gaussian Blur now, let's say I click on 8.2 as a radius and OK. But once again, I'm not happy with that and it's too intense. I now have this option on the layer to double click and then edit the radius, which is brilliant. It means I don't have to go back, take any steps back, and it means that I don't have to have all my eggs in one basket when I'm making the decision, because sometimes you just don't really know if the effect's gonna be intense enough or not, just by this little box here. So anyway, just wanted to add that into this tutorial because it's actually something you can use not just with the Gaussian blur, but with any filter. So for this effect, I'm going to choose around about, let's go for about seven and click OK. So we've got the Gaussian blur on the layer. The next thing to do is to add a levels adjustment. Now you don't want to do it under the adjustments here because that will actually pop the levels adjustment above. So if I just click that and click this, you can see that it's actually above my layer. I want the levels adjustment on the layer itself. So I'm going to press delete to get rid of that. And then what you need to do is come up to Image, Adjustments, and go to Levels. Now the Levels is actually on the layer itself now, as you can see. Now with this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my highlights and drag them down to the middle. And you can see it's making it really bright here. Don't worry too much about that. And I'm going to drag my shadows up like that. I'm going to click OK. 
And right now you can see that the image looks, well, it looks horrible, doesn't it? But it's not gonna look horrible for long. So the next thing I need to do is drag my opacity slider all the way down to get rid of the effect. Now, this is where we use the opacity slider to get the desired effect that we want. So I'm just gonna drag this up and as you can see, it's making a real difference. So I'm gonna drag it to about 20. Now, if I click the eye on and off here to make the layer visible, you can see this is without the effect and this is with the effect. I think this is a really lovely effect. It just adds vibrancy and it gives a lovely soft feel, almost like when you go out and shoot misty mornings in the woodlands. It really gives that lovely, soft, subtle effect to the photo. So that's the first effect. My advice is with this, use it subtly. Don't go ahead and push the opacity all the way up because if you do, you're gonna get something really horrible like that and you don't want that. So I'm gonna click this off right now and now we're gonna move on to the next effect. Now this is one that I came up with and this is actually completely the opposite of the effect that we've just done. This one is to make the picture, <coughs> excuse me, more crunchy and more punchy. And this just gives it like a sharper, more defined look to your woodland photo. This is really good when you've actually got softer images and you're looking to get that crunchy effect in the barks of the trees and just the kind of foliage around the area as well. So first step to do, control J, duplicate the layer. And then we're gonna do the same thing this time, right click and remember convert to smart object because we're adding a filter up to filter and we're going to use the Gaussian blur once again. <clears throat> now I'm going to choose the Gaussian blur of about eight, click OK. And the next step is to go to a high pass filter. So up to filter, down to other and then to high pass. Now you're going to get this weird effect which if you've never used a high pass filter before, you might be wondering what the heck's going on. But don't worry, uh, what we need to do here is we really need to zoom in a little bit to the image and we want to get it so we can actually see a lot of the detail but not too much. So let me show you what I mean. If I was to bring it down to 4.4, there's not enough detail showing up here. And if I was to bring it up to, let's say, 13.9, all the detail in the image is being shown. See, we need to filter certain areas out and I'm looking to get most of the kind of details in the bark, which you can see here, and some in the kind of foliage and everything that's around here as well. So I think about eight is pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead with that and click okay. Now, of course, we don't want this gray looking image because, well, it looks horrible. So what we need to do is we need to go down to the blend modes right here and we need to choose a blend mode. Now the blend modes I think that work very well for this are Vivid Light and Linear Light. So we're gonna go ahead and click Vivid Light for this one. And right away you can see that it's been added to the layer. Now at the moment, the effect looks way too strong. So we need to do the same as what we did with the first effect. We need to drag the opacity all the way down. And then what I like to do with this effect, because it's a very subtle effect, is I like to zoom in close to areas on the image to see how it's having an effect on them. So if I bring the opacity up now, I'm able to see the subtle effect that it's having in these areas here. It's just giving it more depth, as you can see, and it's just creating more of a defined edge. So if I just take this off, there you go, and then on. And it just really gives this harder edge to all the details in the photo. Now with this effect, it's really good, like I said, for softer images where you wanna get more details. It's quite similar to sharpening, but actually you're sharpening and you're adding clarity at the same time almost. And it goes into more depth with different details in the images. So I really like this effect when you've got softer images and you just want to add that more of a crispy look to them. Now in this image, you can see that the bark is already quite, it's quite crispy and it's quite sharp. So you don't necessarily need it on this area. 
So if you want to add it to specific areas in the photo, what you can do is you can go and click a mask here on the layer. And then what I like to do is I like to go control I, this hides the effect, and then you can just zoom out and you can use a brush by pressing B. And then you can paint this into certain areas that you want it to be more defined in. So what I do is I'm going to actually choose it for these areas around here. I think the bark's kind of strong enough effect. So I'm just adding it in to the bottom here where you've got the floor of the forest. Now, of course, this is a very rough kind of adding. I'd probably spend more time doing it than this. But now we've got this effect added in and it's not added to the trees. Just like that. Okay, so there you go. Now this video went on a bit longer than I was expecting it to, um, but hopefully you've actually got some kind of real value from these two techniques and it's something you can use going forward on your woodland photos. Now if you're new here and it's your first time arriving on my channel, it would just be awesome if you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, then you can watch future videos whenever you like. Anyway guys, I wanna thank you for watching today's video and whatever you do for the rest of the day, make sure it's a good one and I'll see you in the next video.